Hi, I'm Marco Leas, State Representative for the 21st District, and this is our first video update of 2013. Uh, rather than talk about issues or, or do our Washington whiteboard, this week I thought we'd focus on the great feedback we heard from you during our latest Teletown Hall that we completed just the first week of session. So we've got some audio uh, that we're going to play for you with some great comments, and it's around the issue of gun safety and, and how we make sure that we protect our friends and neighbors from gun violence. So if you have ideas on this, you'll hear some comments from your friends and neighbors here in the 21st District, but you can always send me an email. Uh, or you can give me a call or reach out in other ways to let me know your thoughts on how we can address this issue. So enjoy this audio and thanks for participating, joining over 2,500 people that uh, were on our telephone town hall. We look forward to doing more of these in the future. So right now we're going to go with Sally in Edmonds. Uh, Sally, are you there? Yes, I am. Go, go ahead. I have a, a daughter who teaches kindergarten in the DuPont school system. Uh, and, of course, that's right across from Fort Lewis there. Uh, there are a number of teachers in her school that uh, are retired military, and they have had a military weapon training. And she said that they all feel like sitting ducks because they're not allowed to carry guns, and yet anybody can come into the school and uh, uh, shoot them. So uh, her feeling is that... Uh, these uh, retired military should, since they've had the training, be able to carry guns. My other comment is that, according to the newspaper, uh, the University of Washington is accepting more out-of-state students because they get more money in tuition. And uh, I also graduated from the University of Washington, and that was not the situation in 1978, uh, 79, 80 when I graduated. And I I would like something done so that the students that we're paying taxes for from this state have priority at the university. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Sally. So um, the next caller we're going to take is Corrine, and Corrine has a comment about arming teachers. I think Corrine is there? Yeah, I'm here. Go ahead. Good evening. First of all, I have a sister-in-law who's an elementary school teacher, and they've had to have the principal come in and carry kids out of the class that are disrupting it. First of all, the bad behavior begins at home. The parents need to learn to control it. Second of all, it's not the teacher's responsibility to be armed with weapons to protect the kids. It's the public in general. It's our responsibility to figure out how to stop the problem. Second of all, I've been unemployed two and a half years. So I hope that we get some job growth, and I hope that we don't run out of funding for unemployment because my extension's over, and guess what, folks? I'm still unemployed, so give me a job. Okay, thanks. We're going to try and get two more callers that have uh, some comments about school safety. We have uh, Christina. All right, actually, we're going to go with James and Linwood. Um, James, are you there? It might be Rick and Linwood. Yes, it's Rick and Linwood. Okay, Rick, go ahead. <clears throat> yeah, um, I, I moved from uh, Kitsap County probably about a year and a half, to, well, a couple years ago. And uh, <clears throat> there they had resource officers in the schools. And I'm wondering, is that what occurs out here in the county here, or is that not done? Okay, so we're going to hold that question, and we're going to take one more caller, and then we're going to let Representative Leas uh, can respond and uh, follow up on these. So we have Christina who has a question about guns and mental illness. Uh, Christina, are you there? Uh, yeah, that Go must ahead. be me, I guess. Yes. Yeah, I, my question is, is, is anybody addressing the, the, the amount of mentally, you know, kids that are having mental illness in schools? Because I see them, you know, getting in trouble and going right back and then getting, having, taking drugs and, and or not, you know, their doctor prescribes some drugs, and then they end up, you know, blaming all the problem on guns. But I don't see anybody addressing the other side of it. Is there any money or any anything going into that? Okay, so um, there are a few questions and comments in there. Um, we still have more gun control questions that we uh, will try and get to here in a second, but uh, we're going to throw it back to Marco now to kind of respond to some of those. Well, and I appreciate your patience as we try to just hear from as many folks as we can. Um, I think 
between Sally and Corrine, you see a little bit of our democratic process and discussion, you know, uh, some differing perspectives on maybe retired military folks or retired law enforcement that have the skills and training should be allowed uh, to carry, you know, weapons in schools. And, and Corrine sort of, you know, I agree sort of, I agree with Corrine's perspective that really our teachers and school personnel should focus on education. And if we've got concerns around safety, we need to make sure that there's law enforcement and others that are going to provide that security for our schools. Um, but this is part of the give and take of our democracy. We don't always agree. We don't always come to the same answer on things. We just got to do the best we can to, to listen to each other and have a discussion and do the best we can. So on that specific proposal, I continue to have concerns around arming teachers. I think we've got to do more uh, to f focus them on the job at hand. And then, you know, Rick raises that great issue of if we're going to think about ways to make our schools safer, maybe the model of school resource officers is something we should take a look at. And that's where a local police officer or sheriff's deputy partners with uh, the local school and is there part of the day or all of the day, um, providing some of that presence, not just security, really more of a law enforcement presence to educate kids about law, uh, law enforcement issues and also just to be a reassuring uh, presence on the campus. So I think that is a model that deserves more scrutiny as a way to provide um, some enhanced security and a feeling of safety on our campuses. Uh, for those of you that were on the call earlier when Sheriff Lovick was with us, he did share that he is forming a school safety unit uh, with a number of deputies to help work with the 94 schools in the unincorporated areas. Uh, the challenge with school resource officers is usually it's in the past it's been kind of a 50-50 match between the school district paying and the local law enforcement agency that furnishes the officer paying. And in these tough budget times, schools haven't had the resources in many of our cities uh, and our county governments have also faced some of those budget cuts. So I think that's why you've seen those programs uh, get cut or eliminated. I'm not aware that in the Muckleteo or Edmond school districts that we have school resource officers that are actively participating in our schools. I could be wrong, but that's my uh, awareness to date. So I think Rick brings that idea forward, and I think that that's one that we should take a look at. Rather than arming teachers, focus on getting um, trained law enforcement personnel to be a part of our school safety plans in a more uh, organic way. And then Christina raises the issue that I think we're all thinking about, which is uh, when folks are suffering from profound mental health uh, challenges, how do we make sure that they get the help and resources and support that they need? I think all of us know someone in our lives that has struggled with depression or has struggled with a mental health condition. And, you know, I can think of folks in my life that after they got access to good medical treatment, they had a doctor that really worked with them, they got medication that they needed, they were able to live a healthy, productive life. And then we can also see folks uh, almost on a daily basis in our society that didn't get that help or resources and either are homeless or, uh, or struggle with even, even violence or other things. And how do we as a state plug that safety net? You know, in our county, we've got 750,000 people that live in Snohomish County, and the number of inpatient beds in a psychiatric ward or a, a, a medical setting for people to stay uh, to get that help they need is in the dozens. Uh, clearly not enough resources, not enough facilities to provide for the need that's in our communities. And this is something as a state we've got to grapple with, work with the medical community, but also look at our state health care programs and make sure we're providing resources to folks that are in crisis, that are in need uh, to get people productive. So for our next video update, we're going to return back to our Washington whiteboard format where we'll start dissecting some of the issues in state government uh, so you can understand how it relates to you. In the meantime, hopefully you enjoyed that audio from our telephone town hall. If you have thoughts on the issues of gun safety and how we protect our communities from the violence that is certainly around us, feel free to share your thoughts by email or by call or we've even had folks come down and visit us in Olympia. I always look forward to hearing from you. Thanks again.